All right. Welcome back to Extra AI, your podcast series on machine learning and AI applications. And this is your host, Raghu Banda. So we are back after a one week break since we wanted to kind of review some of the old podcast conversations in the last weekend. So this week, uh, I got a very interesting conversation and uh, introducing the CRM space into our uh, podcast conversations as well. As we all know, CRM is one of those hot topics and there is a lot happening in the context of AI. We all know that CX or customer experience is the umbrella term which includes not only CRM, but also commerce cloud, marketing cloud, sales cloud and service cloud. So all these different functionalities. So that was important for me to introduce a guest from SAP, Mr. Nick Pender, who's our machine learning and data science leader working in the CX space at SAP. So we will be discussing some of these concepts around CX and how innovation is happening at SAP in the context of AI. We all know that there is a there are a lot of solutions that are designed to help the different businesses better understand their customers, personalize their interactions with them and deliver more relevant and timely experiences. So we will discuss some of these concepts or some of these aspects when we talk about the different solutions out there and the different innovations that are happening out there. As always, I'll provide more details at the end of this podcast conversation. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the conversation that I'm going to have with uh, Mr. Nick Pender. All right. uh, Welcome back to our uh, podcast series, Extra AI. We talk about machine learning and AI applications. And today I have a guest from SAP. in the space of CX and innovation. So I would like to uh, invite Nick Pender on board uh, for our conversation around CX and innovation in the context of AI. So welcome on board, uh, Nick. I would appreciate if you can provide a quick introduction from your end. Thanks for having me, Raghu. Uh, Sure, yeah, my name is Nick Pender. Uh, I'm the Chief Data Scientist at SAP Customer Experience. Um, We've been doing building AI services uh, for the past six years, six, oh, actually over six years uh, within the context of uh, customer experience. Uh, I joined SAP as part of the acquisition of a company called Calidus Cloud. Uh, within Calidus Cloud, we were effectively building the same kind of solutions for uh, products that were related to um front office kind of applications, things like sales and territory core optimizations and things like that. Uh, and since the acquisition, we've expanded into uh, AI applications within uh, e-commerce and um, authentication authorization, marketing, and uh, anything related to customers and you know customer experience. Thank you, Nick. That's a very important topic uh, in our current age of uh, AI innovations with customer experiences and customer experience in CX. So like I like I always uh, get started on my on these podcast sessions, I start with a teaser question so that it can help the audience ease into our conversation. Uh, let me put this question in a in this way. Any real world experience, maybe personal or professional, that you could quote how AI and ML has improved your experiences when compared to in the past, maybe it can be a decade back or even 20 years back or any kind of experience that you could quote. Yeah, exactly. Um, It is, right now it is hard to imagine life without AI. Uh, I remember, well, my background is uh, natural language processing. And when I started in the, in the field, uh, a lot of things that are commonplace today were 
effectively just the pipe dream, things like machine translation, speech recognition, natural language understanding, uh, those things, there were kind of early on applications and they were hard to use. They were, not, they were of very low quality. And today, you know, you get in your car, you, with your voice, you can ask for directions and immediately you have directions to anywhere. Uh, you can send text messages and receive them with your voice. Uh, you can upload an image and get get the name of the item in the image. Uh, it's it, it's it's extraordinary. It's very exciting. And you know, with the with the more latest uh, advances, things like Chat GPT and these large language models, uh, we are seeing things that when I was in graduate school, there were again like dreams to to be able to do these things, and and they are getting closer and closer to reality. So it's, it's it's very exciting. Beautiful. Yeah, I agree with you, Nick. I think whatever in the past, I think whatever uh, things that we were talking about, this machine translation, language translation, and this image recognition, all these things were like pipe dreams, but now these are all possible. And the application space, I think, is building up very much. And uh, yeah, we all know about how chat GPT and came up and now we have other things like around BARD AI or Baidu, there are other things coming up in that space. And yeah, I know the future is very exciting, I would say. That's true, that's true. Um, it, sometimes it's hard to keep up with the with the advances, but uh, yeah, every little piece, it is, I remember when, when I received, when I got my first smartphone, um, what a life changer that was um and now every day something new gets added and and it's it's really hard to imagine life without those things now beautiful beautiful okay so maybe uh, let us take a quick break come back and get into the real meat of our today's conversation <laughs> All right, uh, welcome back. So let us now get into our uh, real meat of our today's conversation about CX and innovation in the context of AI. We nowadays we talk a lot about C CX or the customer experience, and we talk about various solutions here, right? Like whether it is the, I know even with SAP there are a lot, lot of these acquisitions. So we talk about marketing cloud the sales cloud, services cloud, or commerce cloud. Maybe can you highlight the aspects of the customer experience here and why is AI getting more important nowadays in this space? Sure. Yeah, when you look at the, the customer's journey, uh, in the morning, you, you open up your email, you receive some newsletters or some marketing content from from your favorite store, for example, maybe you receive some news items. Um, you might be interested in making a purchase. Uh, you visit your favorite e-commerce website, um, and then uh, you receive your item. Well, first you have to log into your customer's website, to your e-commerce website, and um, and then you make your purchase, the, the item is delivered to you, and then you might have questions about the item, you might have problems about the item. Uh, this entire process has been completely disrupted in the past decade or so by mm -hmm. uh, intelligent applications. The, the email that you receive, the marketing email that you receive has been personalized to you based on your past purchases, based on sometimes um, your demographic information mm -hmm. to make to make the content more relevant, more exciting to you. Um, when you visit your uh, e-commerce website um, and you log in, there is AI in the back end to make sure that your your authentication is secure and uh, you are the person who's accessing your account. Mm -hmm. The transactions are secured with AI. Uh, the items that you see on the on an e-commerce website, they're all personalized again to you based on your your interests and and your browsing history and your purchase history. When you click on an item and you want to purchase it, um, the 
fulfillment center that is selected for it, the estimates, delivery estimates, they're all driven by AI. And then once the once you receive the item, uh, the routing that is done, that's done with the help of AI. And, and then you receive the item and you have questions. You, you might call the customer experience center. A lot of times these days, those are driven by uh, conversational AI technologies. And uh, even when you're speaking with a real person, that person might be pulling up uh, articles and uh, information from a knowledge base, again, with the help of AI. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, as you can see, it's, it's uh, AI plays a huge role in this uh, complicated customer journey. And, uh, and we're in the forefront of it. We are uh, delivering solutions to each and every of these, of these um, pieces of the, of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. So whether you talk about the marketing templates, uh, whether you talk starting with the email marketing template or the website and purchasing something or whether it is the, uh like personalization and so whether it is like once you purchase some item the item getting delivered in each of these steps you see that there is a lot of personalization happening for a particular customer which means that one per so the experience for one person is going to be different for the experience from another person maybe can you highlight a bit on that aspect are we are we getting to a stage where um, the because when we talk about the customer experience here and we and um, as an enterprise firm like you are not only dealing directly with your customers uh, which is the other enterprises or other customers but you're also dealing with your customers customers is that what i'm uh, maybe could you talk a few uh, aspects around that and how important it is there yeah yeah absolutely you're absolutely right uh within sap uh within the customer experience when we talk about customer what we really mean is an enterprise that is sap's customer um and then uh, that customer that sap's customer that enterprise they have their own customer so that could be a b2c uh enterprise for example something like i don't know for example just just an example it could be like an ip or a home depot kind of a place where they are selling to end users or they could be a b2 uh, a b2b solution where they are selling to other businesses like um for example they are providing equipment to airlines or airports and things like that. Um, and uh, the kind of data that these businesses generate, they are very different from each other, mm -hmm. which means the AI solution that we are building for a B2C enterprise is very different from the AI solution that you build for a B2B enterprise. The, the nature of the data is very different. The volumes are very different. The velocities of the goods moving, uh, are very different. Uh, so that that creates an, an interesting challenge. All of these businesses uh, generate a lot of data. Mm -hmm. They generate a lot of different kinds of data. Um, and uh, the work of, uh, of an AI unit, the, the work of a data scientist is to bring in all of that data, all of from, from these disparate sources, join them together, try to make sense of them. And provide a solution that creates value for that customer. Um, and uh, being here at SAP with the large number of customers that we have, uh, that gives us a lot of opportunity to then experiment with different solutions, different kinds of approaches, algorithms, and come up with, with the best solution that would uh, create the most value for our customers. Beautiful. I like the way you have um, highlighted the complete aspects about how the customers' customers are important and how you personalize and how you deliver value. So let us do one thing, uh, Nick. I think maybe let's take a quick break, come back, and then go into the different aspects of uh, the importance and about what are the industries. Uh, we can talk a little more about the industries that are involved here, the different industries. Sounds good.
all right uh, welcome back so uh, we've been we've had some conversation on the overview of uh, the customer experience in the, in the innovation in the ai space so maybe now let us get a bit more into the aspect of why cx now now that we know yeah cx is a very important aspect for the customers so can we talk about what industries are of high importance here and how is it perceived in the context of ai no you you have highlighted briefly about the customers customers and their journey but if you can take us a bit back and say okay what are the industries you now we want to focus on or what industries are of more importance here sure um it's been said a lot that uh, i think something like 75% of all transactions go through a, some sap system they touch some sap system um and that uh, provides us a huge opportunity to create better experiences, uh, better solutions that leverage AI for our customers. Um, and uh, as you noted, the SAP has a has a significant presence in a lot of different industries. And uh, what we are doing is we're trying to target the industries where we have the largest presence. So that creates the biggest biggest bank for the buck effectively. Um, so our top industry is effectively the retail industry mm -hmm. uh, where where you have the where you have B2C customers, they are selling goods to end users. And these could be uh, in the fashion industry or, or groceries or what have you in home decor, things like that. Uh, there is a huge number of products that each one of these customers have and you can leverage a lot of information from the from these products themselves and also they serve a lot of customers all over the world and you can learn a lot about those customers and try to uh, make better product recommendations that effectively work out of the box for those customers of sap the other industry would be the consumer packaged goods industry uh, mm -hmm. more of a B the approach, uh, again, the same thing, uh, that our customers are delivering goods to their business customers. And as I mentioned before, uh, the, the nature of the data that these two industries uh, generate, retail and consumer packaged goods, meaning they're very different. Uh, in the B2B case, the transactions take much longer to, to complete the amount of data that's generated is a lot less, not, not necessarily the amount of goods, but the amount of data that's generated is a lot less, which means uh, the, the machine learning approach that you take in order to provide a, for example, a recommendation for these industries would be very different in nature. Another industry that uh, is very important for uh, SAP is the automotive industry. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, from an AI perspective, that's a completely different beast. Now you're not only dealing with just uh, a product uh, as as one entity. That product itself has many, many, many parts. So, which creates a lot of um, interesting uh, complexities when you're when you're delivering an AI solution. Uh, not only a, an automobile has a lot of parts, mm -hmm. they also come with their own warranties and service agreements and uh, and then how these are packaged together mm -hmm. for a customer, uh, they're, they're very complex. And coming up with AI solutions that caters those things, again, is, is, a, is a very, very uh, complicated endeavor. And uh, and the other industry that we are uh, focusing on would be the utilities. Mm -hmm. uh, again, it's uh, these are the products that we're talking about in the in the utilities industry are extremely complicated, extremely large, extremely expensive, and uh, with uh, very low volumes of transactions. So so these industries, as you can imagine, they each one has its own uh, behaviors its own distribution of the data, its own kind of data. And they all warrant a, diff a completely different approach to uh, an intelligent solution. 
um, you can you can really take a product recommender, for example, from a retail and hope that it works for utilities or 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 automotive. Right. Okay. Yeah. So so these are yeah these are these are the major major industries that we we target right now. Beautiful, beautiful. I think now that we you kind of given us a high level perspective about these different industries that are involved in. Could you talk about some of the AI innovations that are already delivered uh, so that we can uh, understand that, okay, and speak a bit more about that? Absolutely. Um, so speaking of retail, uh, we have delivered for retail industry a number of different product recommenders. So when you th talk about product recommendation, Mm -hmm. That by itself can be very complicated. Um, you, we have to think about what kind of product are we recommending to what kind of customer, when and why. Um, so sometimes you have a you're recommending products based on what customers are viewing. So you want to create a more engaging uh, user experience when the customer is in session, when the user end user is in session browsing uh, products. You want to allow more serendipitous kind of discovery uh, for the user. You want to make the their session more pleasurable. That's mm -hmm. one kind of product recommendation. The other kind of product recommendation is uh, you are trying to create, uh, effectively you want to upsell, you want to create a, a in, in increase in the, in the revenue per transaction. And from the from the perspective of of the business, from the perspective of the user, you want to uh, create more value for the time they are spending on your website. So, for example, you want to say, well, if you're buying a, a cell phone, you might want to buy a phone case, or if you're buying a laptop, you might want to buy a charger or a, or a laptop case. Uh, so this this would be a complementary recommender. Mm -hmm. which you know works on a different kinds of kind of data it has a very different type of objective sometimes you want to recommend products based on the customer's purchase history so okay. to kind of capture their their overall behavior their demographic nature um sometimes you're you're providing trending trending products but a trending product here in california in the middle of January or February would be very different from a trending product in Colorado, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, so then even when you're recommending trending products, it has to be personalized for the user in that location at that time. Um, so, so yeah, so we've been focusing for in retail, we've been focusing on a number of different recommended re product recommenders based on view history, purchase history, uh, based on items in a cart, um, we are working on some other recommenders based on a person's taste, uh, for example, when it comes to fashion products. That's on the retail industry. Mm -hmm. Earlier, I mentioned uh, security. Uh, when you're logging into your e-commerce website, uh, you, right. you want to make sure that uh, that's, that, that uh, is secure. Mm -hmm. We've delivered to our customer data cloud uh, within SAP CX a solution that identifies attacks on a on a website, uh, and uh, we've been working with them to to create an adaptive self learning system that can identify uh, attacks on a website um, that that change behaviors. Mm -hmm. So that's that's already in place. Um, it's proven extremely useful. Um, we are working on uh, some productivity assistance to work with SAP uh, applications. These will help with, uh, you know, you you sifting through your emails uh, as a as an SAP customer, sifting through your email, sifting through uh, the support documents and what have you, to to generate insights and action items for you. Um, and within SAP Service Cloud, we have developed a solution that can help support persons to identify 
knowledge base articles that are relevant to a user's question. Mm -hmm. So these are these are some of the some of the applications that uh, we've delivered within SAP CX. Um, we've delivered some other applications that uh, have since moved from CX to other organizations. For example, S four. We right. we've delivered pricing solution and some product recommendation solutions that are not part of CX anymore, but they're within SAP ecosystem. Beautiful, beautiful. So now. Yeah, now that you've talked about some of these different AI innovations, whether it is in the retail space or uh, the fashion industry space or the other uh, uh, innovations that we are talking about, what is the kind of technology that we are using here? Like, is it is this uh, intelligence being built uh, into the CX processes directly or these ML services or are they being leveraged by these AI ML services that are available on the business technology platform and configured to run with CX? Or or do we have both the kind of varieties where some of them are directly embedded with our HANA ML uh, algorithms and some of them are now available as a AI ML service on BTP getting configured to run with CX uh, innovations? Right, that, that's a good question. Um, early on, we decided that we wanted to have our AI solutions be as low touch as possible, mm -hmm. meaning we wanted to have it effectively like a turnkey type of an application, plug and play. You feed data to it, it learns itself, mm -hmm. it monitors its own quality, and it provides uh, output that can be easily integrated into a solution. And uh, so that's that's one requirement. The other requirement was that we wanted we wanted these solutions to be uh, completely cloud native and scalable, mm -hmm. and also low cost. So based on these requirements, uh, we've developed an architecture that is completely cloud native. It is it runs with uh, in a Kubernetes environment, leveraging uh, Kubeflow. Mm -hmm. uh, from, a, from an architecture point of view, which, which makes it extremely scalable, extremely low cost. Um, they're all designed to be backend services um, with REST API endpoints, which makes it easily plug it, pluggable into any solution. And uh, a lot of these come in already pre-integrated with uh, SAP Commerce, for example, solutions and things like that. But uh, these services are also, we're making them available within BTP. So, so a customer can go and effectively buy these services and integrate them within their own solution if they want to. Mm -hmm. In terms of the machine learning approach, as I mentioned, they are, the, the, the services are completely self-learning. Uh, there is really no need for a lengthy data science engagement to, to look at the customer's data and build custom models for the customer. Uh, the data models are known uh, and the systems are sufficiently automated so that data flows in and they they learn themselves. Yeah. In terms of the machine learning use cases that we uh, deliver, as I mentioned, they're all self-learning. Uh, data comes in, the, the models learn themselves. There is no need for any da lengthy data science engagements. Um, in terms of the use cases that we deliver, uh, we leverage natural language processing for a number of applications, things like extracting structured information from product descriptions to, uh, to search and customized uh, product recommendations as well as productivity assistant. We are leveraging computer vision mm -hmm. uh, to do vision searches, uh, visual searches rather, as well as uh, extracting, again, structured information from, from images. Uh, a lot of these take advantage of deep neural networks. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, some of them don't. Some of them, we just use plain old classic kind of uh, machine learning algorithms Again, depending on the nature of the data, the volume of the data, and the problem we're solving. Uh, but this is the kind of an overall view of the kinds of applications and the kind of architecture technology that we 
we deliver. Beautiful. That's very comprehensive, uh, Nick, for explaining the complete uh, details of these solutions and all of the technology involved there. Uh, let us take a quick break so that the audience can digest some of this information and then we come back and go into the other things. All right, welcome back. Uh, so we have been having some very interesting conversation with uh, Mr. Nick. So we did talk about the different industries, the AI innovations. We also talked about the technology behind this. So now what are the other things uh, that you folks at SAP are looking into while adopting the CX strategy in the context of AI? Maybe a few things that you would like to talk about. Um. That's a good question. We've been, uh, for the past several years, we've been heads down developing these applications and these uh, these services. Um, but right now it's time for us to do a little bit more outreach and, uh, and talk about our achievements and kind of um, toot our own horn, uh, so to speak. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, let the world know what what we've been up to. So uh, right now we are actually also investing a lot of time in filing patents for the for some of the innovations that we've we've achieved. Uh, we are in the middle of organizing some boot camps to introduce uh, AI applications to product managers and solution engineers uh, within SAP and perhaps later outside of SAP. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are also uh, very active in uh, presenting our work, uh, at least currently within SAP uh, conferences, things like SAP TechEd and, uh, and DCOM. And uh, again, the plan is to disseminate some more information within industry conferences outside of SAP and maybe academic conferences. So we're we're kind of branching out from being completely a uh, development shop into a more R and D, and um, and try to establish our team as as a center of excellence. Beautiful, beautiful. So, with that, what is your advice to any customers or partners when they try to implement these AI ML solutions with these different CX offerings? Any thoughts? Sure. So yeah, as, as I mentioned earlier, we've we've delivered a number of different product recommenders and uh, and several other uh, AI based services. And um, well, the easiest thing to do uh, is uh, once a customer licenses an SAP product that has one of these services already integrated, they get that service automatically. They don't have to really do anything. Um, on the other hand, if they wish to integrate one of these services that we are now offering through BTP uh, into their product, then it's 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 extremely easy to kind of look at the, the available services, see which one meets their demand, and uh, then they can effectively license that service, send data to it, and get recommendations out. It's It's effectively as simple as that. Okay. Beautiful. So thank you uh, for getting on this podcast conversation and talking about CX and innovation in the context of AI and talking about the different um, innovations and the different solutions that are built and the technology behind that. Any key takeaways and closing remarks that you would like to share, uh, Nick? Sure. I encourage our customers and partners to educate themselves in terms of the kinds of solutions that uh, CXII uh, offers, this customer experience, intelligence, and innovation. Um, the, we are publishing blog posts. Uh, there is also documentation on SAP website. We are also presenting our work within SAP TechEd and DCOM, as I mentioned before. So I encourage I encourage uh, anybody who's interested to look at those and uh, and learn about our work. And if they're interested, we are here to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Let us now wrap up this podcast number forty-four. I would first like to thank our guest, Mr. Nick Pander 
for spending some valuable time and providing some different aspects around CX and the innovations that are happening here from SAP standpoint. Since CX is a very important aspect for the customers, we have briefly discussed about the different industries that are of high importance. We have seen the various different AI innovations that are happening. And Nick also has explained about the technology that is used here when we are talking about AI innovations. We have also briefly discussed about some of these examples around how you're delivering personalized product recommendations and targeted promotions to the different customers based on their browsing and purchasing history. So with this app, I would like to you all, you can reach out to Nick Pender since I will be tagging him on the LinkedIn post directly, or you can alternatively reach out to me, Raghubanda, and I can also put in touch with Mr. Nick if you have any further questions around this or how do you want to get started and so on and so forth. As always, you could also go and find a whole lot of information on our website, xtrawai.com, extraai.com, wherein we have humongous amount of different podcasts in the context of AI. Any further questions or additional feedback, or if you want me to bring up additional topics, feel free to provide your feedback as always. I will be looking forward to your feedback and I'll bring, bring in many more interesting conversations. You could directly reach out to me on my social media handles, Raghu Banda on LinkedIn or RK Banda at Twitter, or you could also reach out to me via the website extraai.com. Finally, I would like to thank you, the audience, for tuning in and listening in and providing your valuable feedback. Have a wonderful morning, afternoon, or evening, and happy predicting the future with AI technologies. Bye-bye now.